because you know the implication that at the end, if you are found, if it is found out that it was a frivolous petition, it was politically motivated, then you will be charged for perjury. In Nigeria, we don't have such, we don't have such an approbation. I'm just assuming that because of your resume, you may be given a portfolio that may have something to do with changing the situation on ground. Don't you think that it will be necessary for us to have something inserted in our laws that can also take care of not just punishing people who are out to bring down others, even innocent people, but who are out to tarnish the image of public officers and give Nigerians a toga of the image of a corrupt nation? That's the first question. The other question I'd like to ask you is that if you are given a portfolio that has to do with welfare of Nigerians. In the Northeast, my heart bleeds, and I know other Nigerians feel the same, for the victims of Boko Haram, most especially the children, because many of them have lost their parents. Some are separated from their parents. This happened to us during the Civil War between 1970 and 19, between 1967 and 1970. But when we came back from the war, Nigeria had no provision for free education of children who had no homes, who had no parents, whose fathers fought wars and, and died. Don't, what would you do to help the Northeast, particularly the Northeastern state children, where if the war on Boko Haram, as promised by Mr. President, actually ends in December, what will you do to help those children to have a future? Because a lot of people in the eastern region and the south-south died as mechanics and some of them as conductors in motor parks because there was no provision by the federal government of Nigeria for the education of those orphans that came back and were roaming the streets after the war. And yet, we are talking about a country that cares. I'm just mentioning this because of what you said, you said change. Will you be able to bring a change so that those children can have a future? Thank oh, you, Madam Leader. John Eno. Mr. President, my name is John Owen Eno. I represent Kosovo Central. Um, Mr. Nomini, just one or two questions. My first question has to do with um, the the war against corruption vis-a-vis -vis the present laws, anti-corruption laws we have in the country. As a lawyer who has practiced law for several years, do you think that the existing laws are adequate for the present war against corruption? That's number one. Number two. Related to the issue of prison congestion and all that, it's the issue of um, delay in getting justice. I mean, there's a popular saying that justice delayed is justice denied. As a lawyer, what basic ideas do you think you have that you can share with this floor on how to tackle the continuing issue of the delay and the waiting time of getting justice within the country's justice system. Thank you. So let me take those questions. Thank you, sir. Distinguished Senator Bala, you raised a question on political appointees or public office holders who, contrary to their oath and codes of conduct that they have signed, engage in gross abuse, how will I handle it? Whether you can extract from me a firm commitment that I will offer Mr. President frank legal advice on the issue. I understand you very well, sir. I I'm very happy to say that Mr. President has known me for quite a long time. I have represented him in certain matters in court. 
and I have had the privilege of coming back to give him situation report and a way forward on the next proceedings. As a practitioner, it is part of our oath to be honest and straightforward with our clients. Put them in the picture of the situation they find themselves. Let them know what the law, as it is today, says about those situations and leave him with the decisions. For the commendations, I make a vow to you that I will be frank, I will be honest, I will never mislead him, either for any gain or private gain or curry favor by whatever reason. I will look straight into the legal issues and I, I am happy that Mr. President has in recent time told one of us that even if I don't like what you are saying, but you know it is the truth, tell me. So Mr. President and I, I believe, will be on the same page as far as frank legal advice is concerned. And I promise you, I will do so. The second question was fairly tied to this same issue also. Uh, and I assure you that from my end, the first oath that I think I owe any ministry that I'm posted to is to let them know that I will lead that ministry by example. And so if I do not do those things, then the staff under, beginning from the pump sec down the line, will also know that it is no longer business as usual. The distinguished majority leader of Senate, Senator Dume, you did ask about the prison congestion, full of awaiting trials, whereas more privileged people in the society who probably are alleged to have committed higher crimes are often granted bail on self-cognizance and on lesser terms. And these innocent, some of the seemingly innocent ones who, have, who are people of lesser means are subjected to rigors of trial and denied bail. Some of them are even arrested for offense they call wandering. As a private practitioner, I have come in contact with so much of this. As of today, the statistics of the prison inmates is staggering. We have over 57,125 inmates. Out of this, those who are awaiting trial are 35,577, which forms almost 60, almost 90, almost 69 percent of the total number. This is minus the convicts. It's unhealthy for our society. The gap and the consequence of the imbalance is very dangerous to society. What do I intend to do? In my view, we are yet to have truly in the sense what is meant by prison. Majority of our prisons as we are today are concentration camps where people who are even lesser have lesser tendency to crimes go into and become more brazen criminals before they come out because of the, the dangerous processes they go through. They are mixed with so many people. You arrest somebody for a force of wandering and you may not have asked him where he was going to that particular time and they clamped into the prison and they are waiting for DPP's legal advice and for the next three years he's languishing in that place. And before you know it, he's learning how to smoke in Jahem. He's learning how to go and buy something for, for something else. It's a very unhealthy situation. I desire, if I have the privilege to handle such area, to ensure that we go into design and construction of new set of prisons to bring about a situation where we can have corrective measures in prisons where skill acquisition will be the order of the day in our prisons, where we will have mosque and church and other things there to create about a reformation of heart or character in the prisons. The prisons need to be improved upon. But second to it is that I strongly believe 